Welcome to Puzzles and Solutions. In this video, I will go through 5 puzzles from the r slash puzzles subreddit. I personally found these 5 puzzles very enjoyable, so I thought, why not make a video about them and share it with more people. In the first half of the video, I will present the puzzles. I suggest that you pause the video after each puzzle and try your best to solve them. And in the second half of the video, I will share the solution of the puzzles. Puzzle number 1. Given these two triangles built up of 4 parts, where did the extra square disappear to in triangle B? Puzzle number 2. Given these two measurements, from top of the turtle to top of the cat on the table, and from top of the cat to top of the turtle on the table, what is the height of the table? Puzzle number 3. I suggest getting a pen and paper to draw down this puzzle. The only rule of the puzzle is that if you have a square on top of two squares with the value a and b, then the value inside the top square will be a plus b. Given this rule, what is the value of the square in the top of the pyramid? Puzzle number 4. The goal of this puzzle is to get from the green entrance to the red exit. You can only pass through circles in an alternating color pattern. So after passing through a gray circle, you have to pass through a red circle next. And after passing through a red circle, you have to pass through a gray circle next. For example, you can pass through red, gray, red, but not red, red. Given this rule of alternating colors, what pathway can you take through the maze? Puzzle number 5. I decided to leave the largest puzzle for last. The puzzle is explained through a story. You and a friend are walking through the woods, where you run into a wizard. The wizard says he will turn you both into chicken unless you are able to find the magical coin. Further down the road, the wizard has put 25 coins in a 5x5 grid. One of the 25 coins is the magical one, but every coin look identical to each other and they are either facing with their silver side or gold side upwards. The wizard tells you and your friend all of this information. Further, he will let your friend have access to the coins first. The wizard will tell which of the 25 coins is the magical one and allow your friend to turn over 5 coins. If the wizard catches your friend doing anything else to the coins, he will turn you both into chicken instantly. After your friend has turned over 5 coins, he has to keep walking away from the coins in the opposite direction of where you are. The wizard won't give you any information of which of the coins is the magical one. So when you are facing the 25 coins, you have to try to pick the magical one. The wizard will let you pick one of the 25 coins. If it's the magical coin, he will spare you both. If it's not the magical coin, he will turn you into a chicken and then hunt down your friend to turn him into a chicken as well. All of this information that I've given to you is given to you and your friend in advance. You and your friend have 5 minutes to come up with a strategy. The puzzle is, what strategy should you suggest to your friend in order to always pick the magical coin? Keep in mind that you and your friend don't have the information of which coins are facing with their gold side up and which are facing with their silver side up, so you can assume that it's random. Hopefully, you have at least attempted to solve each puzzle by yourself. I will start going through the correct solutions now. Puzzle number 1. Let's start by zooming in on triangle A. I will add this green line along the hypotenuse so that it's easier to see. To show you that the hypotenuse is in fact not a straight line, I will add a straight line between the two hypotenuse corners of the triangle. We can quite clearly see that the green line is curving inwards. For triangle B, if I do the same thing, first adding a green line along the hypotenuse and then adding a straight black line, we can see in fact that the green line is curving outwards. This means that when we went from triangle A to triangle B, the area of the missing square went to the change from inwards to outwards curvature of the hypotenuse. I don't want to get too much into mathematical details, but the way we can see this puzzle mathematically is by looking at the different sine values of the triangles by comparing their height to width ratio. By doing this, we find out that the triangles have different sine values and therefore different angles, and the hypotenuse can't be a straight line. Puzzle number 2. I solved this puzzle using algebra. First, we see that the total height from the floor to the top of the cat is the height of the table plus the height of the cat. And this height of 170 centimeters is just the height from the floor to the top of the cat minus the height of the turtle. Or more specifically, the height of the table plus the height of the cat minus the height of the turtle. Let's just move this to the top and note that it equals 170 centimeters. For the second table situation, we have swapped the place of the cat and the turtle. By using the exact same reasoning, we get that the height of the table plus the height of the turtle minus the height of the cat equals 130 centimeters. Adding these two equations together, we get cat minus cat and turtle minus turtle on the left side, leaving only table plus table on the left side, which equals 170 centimeters plus 130 centimeters, or 300 centimeters. 
the height of two tables equals 300 centimeters, and therefore the height of one table equals 150 centimeters. The main reason I wanted to show this puzzle was this cool explanation someone found which doesn't use much math. Let's move these pictures down to the bottom. If you copy the second picture and put it on top of the first picture such that the two cuts overlap, we get this picture. The height from a turtle sitting on the floor to a turtle sitting on top of two tables equals 300 centimeters. This means that the height of two tables is 300 centimeters and the height of one table is 150 centimeters. We can also add the first picture on top of the second picture and let the turtles overlap. The height of a cat sitting on the floor to the height of a cat sitting on top of two tables equals 300 centimeters and therefore the height of two tables is 300 centimeters and the height of one table is 150 centimeters. All these three ways of solving the puzzle lead to the height of one table being 150 centimeters. Puzzle number three. Starting off this puzzle, I will define the value in this square as x. This gives 23 plus x in the top left square and 29 plus x in the top right square. Because the value above these two squares is 76, we can derive the equation 23 plus x plus 29 plus x equals 76. Cleaning up the equation, we get 2x plus 52 equals 76. And now minus 52 on both sides gives 2x equaling 24 and x equaling 12. Let's place the value 12 instead of x into the first square I talked about. This gives 23 plus 12 equaling 35 on the top left and 29 plus 12 equaling 41 on the top right. The only way to move forward in the puzzle is to do this type of calculation once more. We define the value of this square as x. On the top left we get 4 plus x, on the top right we get 6 plus x. This of course gives the equation 4 plus x plus 6 plus x equals 12. Cleaning it up, we get 2 times x plus 10 equals 12. So 2 times x equals 2, meaning that x equals 1. Putting it back into the pyramid, we get the value 1 in the first square, 5 on the top left, and 7 on the top right. From here, it's pretty straightforward. If you look at these squares, we have a simple subtraction to get the bottom right value. We have 29 minus 7 equaling 22. And now it's just addition. 22 plus 34 equals 56, 29 plus 56 equals 85, 41 plus 85 equals 126, and finally 76 plus 126 equals 202. There we have it, the solution of the puzzle is 202. Personally, I cannot just leave the rest of the pyramid without their values. To find the values, we have to do 17 subtractions in a row like this. Here we have the final pyramid values. Puzzle number 4. Here we start at the entrance and move through the red circle. We only have one option next, which is to move through the grey circle. Again in this situation we only have one option and again and again. Here we have two options. If we move to the left we end up in a position we have already been in with the same color to pass through next, therefore the only logical place to move is downwards. Here again, if we move to the left, we end up in a position we have already been in with the same color to pass through next, therefore it's only logical to keep moving towards the right and up. Moving to the left leads to the same position, so we have to move upwards. Again, if we move to the left, we end up in the same position with the same color to pass through next as we have already been in. When I first attempted to solve the puzzle, I got stuck here for around 3 minutes because I didn't notice that you can move towards the right and downwards. In this position, we simply have to turn back. First, we take a U-turn and pass through the red circle. Notice that we are in a position we have already been in, but it's not unlogical to do this because previously we had to pass through a red circle next, but now we have to pass through a grey circle next. Going back the way we came from, we go through the grey circle, left, through the red circle, downwards, left, grey circle, red circle, grey circle, red, grey, right, red, grey, red. I'm pretty sure that this is in fact the shortest possible path through the maze which passes through the least amount of circles. Puzzle number 5. You and your friend had 5 minutes to discuss a strategy. The following strategy always works. Looking at the coins, you and your friend have to agree to some pattern to number the coins from 1 to 25. Now your friend has to in some way pass the information of which of these 25 coins is the magical one. We do this by looking at the first row they encounter as a number in a binary counting system. 
If a coin faces with gold side up, it's a 1. If a coin faces with silver side up, it's a 0. If you don't know binary, the first coin has the value of 1, the second coin has the value of 2, the third has the value of 4, the fourth has the value of 8, and the fifth has the value of 16. The number in this first row is simply the sum of these binary values. The ones here indicate that we have the values 1, 2 and 16, so 1 plus 2 plus 16 equals 19, which would indicate that coin number 19 is the magical one. You and your friend share this strategy in the 5 minutes you have together. After the 5 minutes are up, your friend comes up to the coins first. The wizard follows him and tells your friend that this coin is the magical one. In the number system, which you and your friend discussed earlier, this is the 6th coin. To get this binary value in the first row, your friend first turns the coin which has the value 16, then the coin which has the value 4, and then the coin which has the value 1. The first row already have value 6 after 3 turns. Keep in mind that achieving this value could take up to 5 turns. The 2 turns he has left, he spends turning 2 random irrelevant coins before walking off. Keep in mind that you wouldn't know which is the magical coin. You walk up to the 25 coins, and you see that the second and the third coin closest to you has their gold side up. This gives a value of 2 plus 4 equaling 6 in binary. You know that the sixth coin in the number system which you already discussed is the magical one. You pick up the magical coin, and the wizard allows you to keep it as a reward. As always, I hope you enjoyed the puzzles and my drawings. I will see you again in the next video.